welcome back and thank you for joining our family of subscribers we really appreciate it. today we're going to talk about something really cool that happened in 1993 while I was racing Speedway and we'll talk about it right now in university I studied motion pictures writing producing directing and I thought hey that would be fun so in 1993 I wrote directed and produced my first motion picture and it wasn't a YouTube video it was the conquest I spent like one year one exhausting year so so exhausting writing it and producing it and making it and I had a friend he was really rich his name was Peter Martini he had passed away since rest in peace he went ahead and said, Brian, if you make this movie, I will fund it. It was only like $10,000, which is like a half a million pesos, not that much. But we went ahead and said, let's give it a whirl. Since I'm kind of a unique and interesting individual, I wanted to write a screenplay that reflected my interest. I liked ice hockey and I thought there's not that many black people that play the sport of ice hockey. You have basketball all full of black people, baseball, many sports with black people, but hockey, ice hockey, which is played like in the northern areas like Canada and other places there's not that many black ice hockey players and I thought that would be cool to make a hockey movie about a black hockey star so I thought hmm I will do that one so I wrote The Conquest but the big problem is is where do I find a good ice hockey player that's black that was the problem I was like I don't know I attended a hockey game. It was the Bullfrogs in Anaheim. They played the Connecticut Coasters. And I was just sitting there like a few rows above the floor area. And I saw this big black hockey player. And I'm like, there's a black hockey player. I am writing a movie about a black hockey player. And this guy was big and strong and he was mean. And I'm like, I like that guy. He sounds like Calvin White. The guy that I wrote in the movie, the black hockey player. So I went ahead and went down to the bench where all the players were and I wrote a no note on my business card and I said, I want to talk to that black hockey player after the game. And I said, give this note to the hockey player. So they did and the hockey player, when he got off the ice, he looked at it and he said, okay, I'll talk to you. So we met after the game in the back corridor near the locker room. And I talked to him about starring in the movie. His name is Berkeley Hoagland and Berkeley was really a cool guy and is a cool guy today. He's a funny guy and I said, I like this guy. I thought he was mean. He was like, really like, and he was tearing guys heads off, sticking guys in the back. The guy was just radical on the ice. But when you got him off, he was like a puppy dog. I liked him. He was cool. And we became good friends. We went ahead and he helped me do a lot of the casting. We did Mike Butterfield, a former NHL hockey player. And we got some other really good hockey players. I don't know how we did it but we got Jack White he was a hockey producer of the Mighty Ducks hockey movies remember that movie the Mighty Ducks we had all the ice hockey players from the Mighty Ducks movies as stunt doubles we had it all going on for just a ten thousand dollar budget and with a lot of help so we had a lot of great people involved we even had the Speedway star, Sean McConnell, 
Sean the Mad Dog McConnell. He was a hockey player in the movie. The movie was not a raging success, but it was a lot of fun. We got our money back, so that was good. But it was just a lot of fun. We spent like three months filming it all over Big Bear, Orange, California, and we rented the San Diego Sports Arena for the championship game. Probably the craziest thing I did in the movie was at the beginning of the movie Calvin White lives in South Central LA with all the gangsters and stuff and I went alone to film there alone with my expensive camera equipment and there was a lot of gangsters and murderers and robbers they're trying to steal my camera my money my wallet everything and I had a gun pulled on me and I was like hey I'm, a, I'm not a police I'm just uh, making a movie and they're like what and i went ahead and filmed in south central la there was hobos on the streets and bums and it was really scary and i think i won't do that one again i was lucky to get out with my life i just love making movies i was interviewed in a newspaper and i said i was gonna make over 1000 movies in my life but that wasn't true but i made over 1000 youtube videos so I was able to make a lot of YouTube videos, but I didn't make full-length motion pictures. Maybe it wasn't in the cards, or maybe it's next for me, but who knows? We had over 50 actors. And we had ice hockey players all over the place. We filmed at Huntington Beach, all over the place. We just went all over on locations and it was just an amazing experience. Completely wiped me out. I mean, it just burned me out. I was so tired at the end of the movie because I wrote, directed, produced, and edited the movie. It was just completely wipeout. I edited the movie right next to Burbank Studios, the Warner Brothers Studios in Hollywood. And it was just an exhausting experience, a lot of fun. I'm recouped now. But the conquest was just really fun. There was so many actors and I learned so much about directing and it was just a really a great experience overall. The name of the movie, The Conquest, came from a movie script I wrote in college. It was a fight movie. A friend of mine named Curtis Cox and I, we wrote it. We were kind of buddies in college and we wrote that movie. We never made it, but we wrote it. It was like a rocky fight movie. Thank you so much for watching this movie about the conquest. I could go on and on and on, but I'm gonna go ahead and post some more videos here, right above us here. And if you wanna go ahead and continue watching some exciting Bumblebee material, go ahead and do that. So please like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell right next to you. Ring it. Thank you. Take care.